Hey, and welcome to Dirty Lazy Girl, a podcast that offers realistic girlfriend support and problem solving for imperfect people. You don't have to be perfect to be successful. Every week, we'll give you unconventional, dirty, or lazy problem solving strategies. Let's get started. In the Dirty Lazy Keto Facebook support group this week, a lovely young lady, Carla, posted this very important question. And I bet a lot of our listeners can relate to it. So I'm going to read Carla's question out loud. She says, this is going to be a hard time with Thanksgiving this year and Christmas coming up. We always have a huge spread of good Southern food. What does everybody do? Dig in or skip out? Hmm. Great question. <laughs> Did you like my terrible accent I was trying to do, Carla? <laughs> yeah. It was really bad. I just want to put that out there. But hey, here's the thing. I bet a lot of our listeners can relate to what Carla is struggling with. Um, no matter where you're at in your struggle, in your journey to lose weight or keep weight off or just eat healthy, um, I bet we can all relate to the issue about holiday temptations. So what are you going to do? You know, well, she's right. You have, she said two options. You can dig in or skip out, but I think there's actually three options. Three? You, yes. You could just be super strict and keep on your diet and don't cheat, or you can have a planned, modified, small cheat, or you can just go all out and just have a hog fest. <laughs> That's it. All it is. Just give up. solved for you, Carla. That's just, there's three choices, right? I don't see any other ones. <laughs> so today's episode, we are going to explore the three options and the pros and cons of choosing each one. In fact, we're not going to tell you that one is necessarily right for you right stephanie like we each have you know one that's going to work better for us and in fact at the end we'll tell you which one we're going to choose well we're going to have to hash it out let's, yes. let's weigh the pros and cons and try to have an open mind because you that's never know right. we might kind of change each other's mind you never know or give us some new information we hadn't thought of exactly but first let's take a quick break so today's episode listeners with the holidays coming up um, it is sponsored by the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. Um, there's lots of great ideas in here to help you with making holiday desserts, and you can make them in a new way this year. So for example, apple crisp, peanut butter pie, creme brulee. These recipes are inside the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. You can order on the website, dirtylazyketo.com forward slash books, or at Walmart or Target, wherever you like to shop for books. Thanks, Stephanie. So let's get, let's get started by diving into our three strategies. The thing is, is you're going to take one path, whether you plan it or not, right? You're going to end up on one of those paths. So I think it's a good idea to really just mull it over and think about it and then maybe proactively choose one thing. That way you don't just go in blind, right? Well, let's take maybe each strategy one at a time, Tamara. We can let's do it. Just dive into the first one. Let's okay. Let's, Let's talk about the one that probably most people are thinking about. Like, okay. um, well, the only way that works, people might think, is to just skip the entire season of holiday treats. And go. So that's, that's an opportunity, right? That's one strategy a person yes. could, could use. So yes. what would that look like to you if you were to just skip all holiday treats? Ugh, that For example. That would be so hard. I've done it. And the only way for me that I can do this strategy is if I actually don't go to my relative's house for Thanksgiving. It's just too hard for me. Um, and I, we've been able to do this because my son now is away at college. So we have the perfect excuse like, oh, we're going to go spend Thanksgiving or Christmas with him. And that way, I just I take myself out away from temptation altogether. And that's, so I can do the strict way, but I, for me, I have to just remove myself. And then when we go down to visit my son, you know, we can pick the restaurants. I, I'm in much, much more control. So the pro of my way of doing it is that I don't have the temptation. It's great. I'm not sitting there staring at pie and potatoes, you know. The downside is that, you know, I don't get to connect with my relatives as much and, you know, which is a good or a bad thing, depending on your relatives. And, um, you know, so the social part you miss and you may, I do miss having turkey. That's, you know, there's nothing like a homemade turkey and that is keto. So I do miss on out on some of those like restaurant versions just aren't the same. 
Um, so for me, I can do this, but I do have to make some sacrifices. And for me, it's more, more the social time and maybe a few of the nice keto friendly stuff I would get. Okay. What about you? Well, that is a lot of, I'm taking it all in. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You see, I just want to point out to our listeners that clearly this is like a really important topic for us. I think it's an emotionally charged topic. Yeah. There's no easy answer. So that's why Tamara and I decided to devote a whole episode to just really thinking about it. Because for me, it's a lot to process. Mm -hmm. So if I was to choose this path and say to myself, I'm going to skip 100% of all holiday treats, for me, what that would look like would be like zero tolerance, kind of like what you said, where I would just pass on it all. And when I was new to losing weight in my journey, for me, this strategy was actually very effective. Um, At the time when I was new, I didn't have a lot of skills in terms of like handling pushy relatives. I wasn't really sure of myself in the kitchen yet, like how to make substitutes or change my like family recipes. Um, So when I was newer to DLK, this was a strategy that I found to be more effective. Um, But you're right. I mean, it's not always as easy as it sounds, right? Because, you know, when there was no treats in the house, I felt a little bit resentful. I'll be honest. Like it was a little bit depressing to think mm-hmm. at the time, you know, when I decided to just pass them at all, I felt a little bit sad. Like, you know, what happens if I have a glass of wine or, you know, if I'm feeling stressed about missing out and then I have a bite of, you know, my grandmother's dish, then I would kind of feel like, I don't know, my kids are scarred for life. I'm Scrooge. I'm a party pooper, right? Like it was an emotionally weird kind of experience. Because food means more than just nutrition at the, especially at holidays. It's like, you know, your, your mom's watching you to see if you eat her pie, because that means you love her. (laughs) It's that kind of stuff that these holidays bring up. So when you say no, Sometimes you're saying no to more than just food. Like you said, you don't want to rob your kids of some tradition or, you know, that's supposed to be, they mean you love them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's confusing. So I just want to admit that this is not like a really simple choice to make. I mean, in terms of the pros though, I do want to acknowledge that when I did make that choice early in my journey to just cut out, you know, the sugar and the high carb type treats over the holidays, I did feel empowered. And at times I felt really confident and I was able to maybe think about how I could celebrate holidays in a new way. Mm -hmm. And it challenged me to think maybe beyond food. Like, is this really the tradition I want to pass on to my kids that I'm overeating or that I'm gaining, you know, a lot of weight during the winter months? Or do I want to really talk about family and culture and um, just different activities? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever tried to celebrate the holidays in a different way other than food or there? Yeah, it's hard though. Like my family resists me, you know, like Mm -hmm. change your traditions or even just me going down to see my son. It's, I have the excuse. I couldn't imagine if I didn't have that excuse. Yeah. I'd get grief for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, people get mad when you don't want their treats or their, their dishes or you're changing a recipe. They get really offended. They do get offended. And yes, yes, they do. And so I remember I brought my own keto version of a dish once to my mom's and she's like, you don't like mine? You right. don't like mine? I, and I, I got, remember us talking about that. Yes. I had the same experience. Like our yes. moms got mad. Like what, yes. what's wrong with mine? Yeah. So like, this is what's wrong with yours. We're just doing it differently or yeah. They, yeah. So you're going like to you can get some pushback for this one. So just be ready for that. But like you said, I, I will agree with you when you said it's empowering. Like if you, if you get through it and you make it through, man, that's a good feeling. Cause if you can do this, you can do anything, <laughs> you know? So it's a that's very true. empowering thing. I would say, Stephanie, the person who probably this works the best for are the all or nothing people, the people who have to just go hardcore and they, they're, they're better when they have a plan and they don't have any cheating. Like if you're that kind of person, this is probably, don't you think the better strategy for you? I don't know if I'm comfortable saying who, what strategy is best for each person Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I'm not going to give away what my strategy because I want to save that to the end. Mm -hmm. But I do think sometimes these techniques can be helpful according to the moment. 
Like it doesn't mean necessarily you have to do all or nothing for the entire holiday season. I oh, think yeah. you could also make the strategy apply in a case by case situation. Like so. at my office holiday party, I'm going to do X or at my yeah. mom's, I'm going to do Y. Like it could be a case by case yeah, or it could be, you know, the whole season. That's, that's actually a good point. You're right. Cause the holidays don't just, aren't just one thing. <laughs> No. Especially Christmas. For me, my holiday starts around ho um, Halloween and then yeah. it goes all the way until January. <laughs> it doesn't stop. So, yeah, that's not really a choice that I could just yeah. go hog wild and do whatever right. I wanted for three months. Because that's right. what I did my whole life. And I ended up weighing, you know, close to 300 pounds. Well, it's funny because we talked about like even leftovers, like Halloween leftovers, we talked about being a problem. But same with Thanksgiving. Do you guys have a tradition of eating the leftovers the next day? We do for the next week. <laughs> right? It's like a nonstop eating fest. So you're right. Yeah. So maybe a case by case, you know, decision. Yeah. All or nothing doesn't always have to be the whole season or nothing. Yeah. It could be like moment by moment, meal by meal, or even dish by dish. Um, yeah. You know, earlier I was talking about like celebrating new traditions. And, you know, when I was new in this journey, I was really trying to figure out how I could pass on traditions to my kids. And I started using like my grandmother's china and her mm -hmm. tablecloth that she hand stitched and embroidered and sharing photo albums with my kids. Cause mm -hmm. I want them to think of the holidays about family and about yeah. where my family came from and not necessarily the food that, that, that we eat. Cause that's just one part. Yeah. True. True. And I also try not to that my, force my kids to eat anything. And if I see relatives trying to do that, I intervene because I don't want that them to have to feel bad and pushed into eating certain things. Like that's just not a good holidays can get that way, unfortunately. Well, it's emotionally charged. And that's yeah. why I think it's really complex. And when people yeah. oh you know, I've heard other people on in the media social media they'll say, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you don't want to eat that, they just don't buy it. And, and and it's like yeah, I don't I don't think it's that easy of a decision to make. No, it's not. No. Because especially when you're with people that you care yeah. about yeah. and the food is tied to that relationship or that yeah. celebration changing that pattern is really really hard it is hard it that's is why really we're hard. talking about it right and that's why we have more than one strategy too yeah let's so, go to the second strategy okay so this one is the indulge once in a while strategy or kind of like a modified and planned indulgence i guess okay. anyway <laughs> Well, so, you know, I was trying to make the topic so it's not like the word cheat, because I think the word yeah. cheat is like really negative, but yes. not just indulging. What about choosing yeah. to indulge? Is that a cheat or is that a conscientious? Yeah. That's a double whatever, but you know what I'm <laughs> saying. But yeah, I mean, these don't, yeah. I'm trying not to like put our opinions on these. Yeah. Our listeners might have their own feelings too, yeah. and that's valid. So what if they want to indulge once in a while? Yeah. Is that yeah, good or bad? I mean, what's the good, bad, and the ugly for that one? Yeah. Do you want me to go first for me? <laughs> well, what does that look like? Let's just pick it apart okay. one thing at a time. What would, what me, would be an example of that? For me, it, it could be different. Um, yours may be totally different than mine, but for me, I can resist a lot of the yummy stuff um, on Thanksgiving. Like, I, you know, I don't have to have the cranberry sauce. I'm not a big sweet potato yam girl. I don't even need the rolls. Like I, I can say no to this. So I'm perfectly fine. It's the, there are two things that I have a hard time resisting. Oh, this. here it is. <laughs> mashed potatoes and pie. Pie, and what was the other one? Mashed potatoes. Oh, like, mashed potatoes and pie. Uh, okay. Oh my God, those two get me. Now, the mashed potatoes, um, I can have a keto substitute. I like the mashed cauliflower, but the pie, there, for me, there's no substitute. So for me, for me, this would look like, I could do pretty good through the whole meal, but then allow myself a piece of pie. One piece, not two, because, you know, they bring four different kinds of pie. You're all having one of 12 pies. <laughs> so I picked my favorite and I carefully don't get the humongous slice, but a very small slice. And then that is my, you know, and that is what I, how I do a modified indulgence strategy. And I, um, and then, and I would recommend that for other people. If there's just certain things you just feel horribly deprived about without having and you just really miss and you feel like you need well go ahead and just but do a small piece and then be strict everywhere else that's how it works for me and the the positives are i don't well, hold on, on. Okay. i'm gonna jump in there girlfriend okay go because 
what that would look like for me is a little bit different. So I just want to okay. paint, paint yeah. a picture that way our listeners are like, okay, you know, I can see that one idea about indulging okay, in there, what that looks like for Tamara. So I want to share mine. Okay. And for me, instead of having like a small portion of a normal dish, like a regular dish, for me, a indulging would be making a low carb substitute of that dish. Mm -hmm. So for me, like at the holidays, I can't do a small piece of anything. <laughs> okay. That's why I was like, I'm going to jump in here. Cause for me, having a small piece of pie wouldn't work because I, I just, I don't have that skill set. <laughs> so what I do is I make, <laughs> I'm all trying to be nice. So what I do is I make a low carb substitute for a dessert, for example, and I'll make like my birthday cheesecake. And that's in the Dirty Lazy Keto Cookbook. And as I shared many times, I only make this once a year. And I love this dish so much. And I think I made you one before. It's so good. <laughs> but here's the thing, Tamara, yeah. I eat the entire cheesecake. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's just the truth. But yeah. not all at once. I'll eat it breakfast, lunch, and dinner for like two or three days. Yeah. Okay, I know that sounds really embarrassing, but whatever. So for me, I make the low carb substitute and that's my indulgence. Yeah. And then I can, you know, eat a lot of it. Yeah. And we get, and that's we, what I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it's a little different from how you do it. No, and, and yeah. that cheesecake is so yummy and I could eat the whole one too. But so and for you, yeah. So for you, it's really indulging on a, on a keto substitute, yeah. which is great. But, but and let's be real. That it has calories. I mean, it yeah. adds up. Like, yeah. it's not healthy for me to eat an entire cheesecake in 24 right. hours. No. I, I know that. <laughs> yeah. But for me, it's an indulgence. Yeah. And then we, the, the good side is that we both feel like we're not as deprived. We've got our yes. little sweet fix. So yeah. that's, the, that's the great pro that of this, this method. Pro, do you feel like happy and satisfied? Yeah, when you I do. Happy? Yes. And I also get to the carb pushers can, you know, I can say yes to something. You can say yes to something. Yeah. So when they're pushing the pie, I can say, yes, I will have a piece of pie, a small piece. Thank yeah. you. And it feels good. I don't have to fight the carb pushers. Not that I, I can. Well, it makes you feel like kind of normal, like you're part of the family. Yes. Right? You're not I, Yes. Like you're yes. like everybody else. Yes. But the downside, let's talk a little bit yeah. about the downside oh, okay. of this. <laughs> it's, it's easy to overeat like that. You're right. That pie, once you have that piece of pie and then you see the four others it's hard to resist so yeah for me i can avoid the downside if i plan and i'm mindful so i have to if i don't go in with a you know tamra you're gonna only eat one piece of pie stick to your plan i give myself the pep talk then i'm usually pretty good but if i don't do that i it's easily just oh i'll just have to and oh you know yeah. and then of course it's a downward spiral spiral well, like a slippery slope right is that what you're yes. saying yes yes so one piece could turn into one pie yes or more <laughs> or you're like screw it i already have the pie bring right. on the potatoes bring on <laughs> yeah right the no, exactly. I, mean, I, I get it. It's like once you have a little taste for that, sometimes yeah. it, it, it doesn't have to be sugar. It could be like you said, a mashed potato. But sometimes once you get a taste for some of these holiday traditions, yes, it can like make your mind like blah, 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 yeah. like back in time. And all of a sudden it's a free for all. Yeah. At least that's what it is for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons to the strategy. Yeah. For me, I feel kind of like we talked about with our kids. I feel <laughs> like a good parent when, um, when it's the holidays and we make a tradition, like something special, like the cheesecake, mm -hmm. my daughter helps me and we feel like it's a bonding thing that we do in our family. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a good mom making a homemade special treat at the holiday. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you said, I can mm -hmm. feel like, gosh, why am I still so obsessed about food? Mm -hmm. Why is food? I mean, here I worked so hard to make these new traditions, you mm -hmm. know, with the China and the activities and the family picture taking and I do all this stuff but then here in the back of my mind I worry why am I so obsessed about food yeah whether yeah. it's a low carb substitute substitute or not mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah I, I mean, do it makes know. me kind of sad sometimes like God, yeah can't, can't I just be like normal people <laughs> I would you know me I like to ask what would skinny people do yeah I don't know, I don't know. what do they do <laughs> they don't think about this and have a whole podcast episode. yeah on their eating strategy. They just eat when they're hungry and they stop when they're full, which yeah. I don't do. <laughs> no, I don't do that either. Yeah. So clearly that's why we're having this conversation because we want yeah. our listeners to start 
you know, every family's different. Every mm -hmm. personality type is different. So for our listeners, I want them to try to weigh the pros and cons and just make a good choice for them. Yes. Not what Tamara does, not what Stephanie does. Yeah. Just think about what's going to work for their family and make yeah. them feel good about themselves. Cause that's yeah. what really matters. Right. I totally agree with you. Just stopping to think about it, you know, and what's best for you is empowering and will make you make better decisions and, and less likely to screw up. And even if you do, you know, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just, you're giving, like you said, more conscientious right. um, awareness about what's yes. going on. Like even just talking about this right now, yeah. it makes me feel like maybe when I'm going to make that cheesecake this year, I don't need yeah. to make two. <laughs> okay. See, see, I'm like, I'm telling everything. I'm telling all these. So what I normally do, Tamara, is I'll make two at Thanksgiving uh -huh. and then I freeze one quote unquote for Christmas. Uh-huh. See, I'm telling, oh my God, I'm like <laughs> turning red here. Because that's what I do. I claim yeah. it's here, Tamara, but yeah. I'm, I'm letting you know it's really twice a year. <laughs> we all know now. <laughs> Damn it! <Your> secrets out. <laughs> oh. Here, you heard it all on the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Well, you know what? Talking about it also is helpful. I mean, that's why we're talking about it, because you and I, this will help us. And hopefully yeah, it will. Listeners. But you guys talk, you know, in our audience, talk about it with on Facebook and the support group or just with friends. That helps, too, just to know you're not alone in, like, worrying about it. Yeah. I mean, this is a big issue. And I'm not one yeah. of those skinny people that can just eat a little bit or eat a lot and then move on the next day. I'm yeah. not. So for me, I have to really think about these things and mm -hmm. process it and, you know, weigh the pros and cons for me and my family and my traditions and, and my health and make a choice that I'm really comfortable with. Yeah. Cause I don't want it to be an accident. I don't want to be on that roller coaster. I'm tired of that. I've did that for most of my life where things just get away from me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want that anymore. I want to make my own choices, whether I choose to eat it or not, doesn't matter. I want to be the one in control. Exactly. Okay, let's get to our last uh, strategy. <laughs> okay, third strategy. Yeah, throw in the towel. Throw just, in the towel. <laughs> just say, heck with it. We're going to take a break for holiday. It's hey, a, a lot of people do this. Time. Yes. Let's be honest. This is a yes. strategy that some people use. Yes, yes. And, I'm, and we're not judging. We're just saying yes. that is a choice that you can make. If that's yes. what you want and you're comfortable, yes. a lot of people do that. I've done it. I have too. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, for me, well, what what, okay, let, let's not, let's not rush to judgment. Okay. Tamara, what did that look like for you? Let's share, like describe that for us. Yeah. For me, it's for one, I don't want to feel deprived and pissed off. And I, and I'm, this is more, more when I've been on diets that were real restrictive and I'm like, I can't deal that. I can't deal with that. I need a break. So I would just take the whole Thanksgiving, you know, weekend off. <laughs> um, so the, you know, the positives of that is I didn't feel deprived and the carb pushers didn't bother me. And, you know, I, I got to have all my favorites. You know, the problem is, is you have to live with the, the guilt and, you know, like, oh, I gave in and was I a failure? And the main thing is it's hard to get back on. Like, there's nothing wrong. Like you said, I don't judge people for doing the strategy, but the, the tough part about this, they all have their tough parts, but the tough part for this one is getting back. Cause once you start like taking all the reins off, whew, it's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely. It's, and it's, it's lovely. Hard to get back. Yes, it can be. Mm. Although, sometimes, well, what's lovely about it? I'm curious. Well, that was I'm, interesting to hear you say that. It's not feeling like I'm deprived. That's the main thing. Mm. But it actually, I will say, I say that. But then also, sometimes you feel terrible, like sick, because you've been eating so good, and then suddenly you just start eating crap. So actually, sometimes physically, you feel horrible. <laughs> well, then, I'm, I'm curious because yeah. you said you, but I want to know how many. Like you, you were talking about like a third person. How does it make you, Tamara, feel? To go all out like that? Yeah. Because you said it made you feel wild, like free. Yeah. It feels you great. You contradicted in the yourself. So I'm curious which one. It feels great in the moment. And then, but after it feels, I feel guilty. And I just, you know, I feel like a failure. Like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. So regretful. Regretful. Yeah. But that's. Isn't, so it, that's, isn't it interesting how emotionally charged this topic is? Yes. Yes. It's like, very like just a minute ago, I was like 
completely beat red because I was talking about my hidden cheesecake. Yes. Yeah. But it, I mean, really, I think our listeners yeah. are hearing these three choices and they're like, at first glance, people will say, oh, I would do this or, oh, I always do yeah. that. But then the yeah. truth is, this is really complex it is and complex. it's confusing mm -hmm. to, to have a strategy and then feel opposite emotions at the same time. Yeah. Like to feel yes. elated and free, but then guilty and sick at the same time. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. What for about you. you? For you. Yeah. I mean, that's I, what you shared. Yeah. So how, how does this strategy work for you? Uh, for me, I think this strategy of just taking a break or not having a restriction, um, I think it's important for me to differentiate between like quote unquote cheating and making an intentional choice. Yeah. Um, and I talk about that in the Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started book. Mm -hmm. in, in case our listeners have it, which I know a lot of people do, it's on page 190 to 191. Mm -hmm. And I really clarify that because I think there's a big difference. Like for me, I don't cheat. If I'm going to enjoy something, I have it. I make a choice and I say, I'm taking a, I'm not restricting myself at this meal or I'm not restricting myself for this snack. <laughs> Or this mm -hmm. drink or whatever it is I'm choosing but I say I make the choice to have it and I own it so for me yeah. that's taken like almost a decade <laughs> to get to yeah. that point where I'm like this is happening and I want it um, and I did that a lot when I was training for the marathons where I was like I'm gonna run I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna eat all this stuff and I like you said would often feel disgusting afterward I think it tasted really good in the moment and anyone who doesn't admit that is lying because food is like a drug. I mean, food tastes good. Let's be real. And it raises your blood sugar immediately mm. and it creates dopamine in the brain. So it feels freaking great. Like you'll start overeating and chowing down on delicious stuff. And you're like, you're the happiest person. I mean, I'm not going to say you, I'm the happiest person yeah. in the world for like four seconds while I'm eating it. Mm. But I also am very aware, like you're saying, as soon as that indulgence is over I feel horrible and I feel yeah. moody I feel bloated mm -hmm. my digestive system gets all screwed up um, in the past I had high cholesterol I had high everything and I didn't like the way I looked so you know we're talking about pros and cons it it, it was it turned pretty ugly for me when yeah. that was a choice that I made yeah yeah. And, and it didn't stop. It wasn't like a moment in time. Yeah. It, it kept going. Yeah. And I couldn't get, I couldn't get off the train. Yeah. I, I, I think you have to have a plan if you're going to, with all of these, actually, you need yeah. to have a plan, but this one, the plan would be set a time limit. Okay. When the weekend's over and I go back, I'm done. And then have, or if you're going to just do like, let's say the Thanksgiving meal, you're just going to go cog wild on Thanksgiving meal. Great. Then just say, okay, it, it, when does that meal end? Like at the pie or, you know, that night and then have some resources to get back. Like just don't go unprepared to your relative's house with no keto food to get you back on track. So, but that, this one needs a, you know, getting well, that's back. That's a tricky is, one though. I'm real hesitant yeah. to give advice to people on how they could do this strategy i think mm -hmm. i think i think we have to maybe just rein it in and talk about for ourselves okay because i don't know if it's possible for me to tell someone to do this strategy i wouldn't personally feel comfortable recommending this but but i can tell you how it would look for me mm -hmm. how would it look for you it, it would not turn out well oh not, that's what you're saying oh okay. yeah <laughs> yeah no so i i'm just yeah. you know we're yeah. having like a real girlfriend moment here yeah you know today's our our serious podcast Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself and I would hope that you would do the same because I don't think we can tell people what to do. I mean, these three options are very complicated. Exactly. Do you think? I think so. So I guess I'll just rephrase that and say, yeah, I, no, I want you to rephrase. I'm, I'm sorry if okay. I'm like being a little challenging. All right. How would I, that look like for you? Tell me more. Well, I would have to have resources to get back on track. There you go. And just, you know, half, uh, a plan in place and a time limit because otherwise it just turns into, you know, on and on and back to that spiral. Yeah. I guess it's like the modified one for me. I have to have a, when does this stop? Is it just a meal? Is it just a, a piece of pie or whatever? So have a limit and have that 
for me, I have to have that going in. Otherwise I go off track. Yeah. Yeah. It is not easy. Is it like, no. that, doesn't it make you <laughs> mad that this is so hard? I don't want to have to make these decisions sometimes. It's like, I don't want to think about it even now. I know. Like just yeah. thinking about the holidays sometimes makes me anxious because I know yeah. this, this is all going to come up. And yeah. I also know if I don't think about it now and really think about it, like, and be honest, mm -hmm. then I'm going to potentially start making choices I'm not comfortable with. Exactly. Like, like, like hiding the cheesecake. <laughs> Oh, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, and for me, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about it because for me, if I don't talk about it and don't face it, I won't have a plan and I'll just go in and cheat, you know, with no limits, no time, you know, so for me, it's, you know, thinking about it puts the brakes on, you know, better. So, well, we have to ask our listeners what they found. I'm all looking at this guy like there's an answer up there. I'm all <laughs> <laughs> no. like, damn it, why isn't this so easy? I know. You start I off today like there's three strategies and now you and I are like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I'm, you know, we told our listeners we're going to reveal at the end what mm -hmm. strategy might work the best for us. But don't you feel a little bit torn between the three? Yeah. Because I do. Yeah. I'm hearing no, it in my voice that I feel sometimes torn between these yeah. options because, you, you know, there's no clear winner. No, I want the easy one, but they're not, none of them's easy. <laughs> no, none of them are easy. <laughs> no, darn it. Dang it. The, I know. I want the easy, the easy road. <laughs> so that was easy. It's a little button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have one of those downstairs. I know. Well, maybe because we talked about it, some of the positives, if we just focus on that part, that'll help. Yeah. Well, you know, you can only make the right decision for you. And right. I do hope that by us maybe going into some of this a little bit more mm -hmm. openly and sharing mm -hmm. what's working best for us or what's not working for mm -hmm. us, maybe our listeners might come up with the right answer for them. That's our hope anyway. Exactly. And if you have the right answer, you should tell us. <laughs> you should tell us. Yes. We need your help, listeners. Right. Us let us, do. Yeah. Let us know. You can tell us by emailing stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or via Facebook or Instagram at dirtylazyketo. But before we get to our final hacks and we'll tell you which strategy we decided to go with, let's take one quick last break. Well, today's episode is sponsored by the Dirty Lazy Keto Dirt Cheap Cookbook. If your plan this holiday season is to stay um, eating low carb or to make low carb substitutes, you will love the 100 easy to make recipes that all cost $10 or less to make. And you can order a copy of the Dirt Cheap Cookbook on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, or even through the links on my website, dirtylazyketo.com. Thank you, Stephanie. So now we get to wrap up by revealing our strategy that we plan to use this holiday season and why. Would you That's like the, me uh, to go first? I'm <laughs> like, I need a drum roll. Like, yes, the big moment. What's Tamara? What's the big reveal? I feel like mine's probably obvious. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like we've kind of really explored some of this stuff. And it, I mean, yeah. for me, I felt surprised by some of the things I shared. So yeah. I'm curious, what do you think will be your strategy? i would probably go with the second one, which okay. is to stay on plan, but have one planned indulgence. For me, it's the pie. <laughs> Girl um, loves her pie. I like my pie, but then it's just one. And then I have to, I'm going to go in with the minds, you know, making sure that's my plan reminding myself of the plan and then um, sticking to it. Otherwise I'll bring, you know, keto food that I, you can have, I can have turkey. There's a lot I can have and then bring the stuff that I want to add to it. That's on the diet plan and then have my one indulgence and then um, go from there. I can't do the hog wild. I, I honestly, I feel horrible and too guilty. It's too emotional and difficult for me to get back on. And it's the same with the other, like those other, the one and three strategy feel too extreme. Like not having anything the whole weekend will crash me as well. I'll be pissed. Like, I'll feel like I just went through this holiday and didn't get anything, you know, well, woe was me. <laughs> so the second ones is what I think is right for me. What about you, Steph? Well, Tamara, my answer might surprise you. I think a lot of okay. people might have pegged me in the you know, one of the extreme categories, but mm -hmm. actually I think my 
true honest answer is to be a little bit in between. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be in between the no fly zone and the once in a while strategy. So a little bit closer to you, but also in the cutout strategy. Um, but I want to explain, um, I do plan to enjoy all the traditional holiday favorites. Um, I do think food is important. And no matter how many damn tablecloths I put out in photos, I'm still <laughs> going to be wanting some of the food. So I am going to enjoy, you know, treats like eggnog, cheesecake, cookies, and even some of the casseroles, but I do plan to make those on um, a different way. So I'm not going to be using the flowers or sugar. I'll be using substitutes. And even though they're quote unquote low carb and dirty, lazy keto, I know I have trouble with portion control. So that's, you know, where you talked about doing things once in a while or indulging. I know I'll be eating a boatload of net carbs, even though they're low carb, if that makes sense. Um, because I have trouble with portion control. And that's okay with me. I'm going to plan to indulge, overindulge, if you will, on some of those low-carb substitutes. That sounds fabulous. And that's my plan. <laughs> right. We'll, we'll see to, how we do. Yeah, we'll have to do a follow-up. <laughs> we'll be of... doing a check-in. Yes. Okay. Well, what's the bigger message, Stephanie? It's that holiday foods are rich with temptation. It's not an easy time of year. You can get swept up in the moment when you're feeling nostalgic or, you know, wanting those things that you can't have, but they may be decisions that you regret later. And we don't want you to lose track of your health goals. So take time now to plan and think about what works for you. And that way you can enjoy the holiday season guilt-free. Awesome. Thanks, Tamara. And listeners, if you're listening um, to the audio version of our podcast, we would sure appreciate your help if you left an honest review on Apple Podcasts. Here is how. On your iPhone, select the purple podcast icon, use the search tool, and type in Dirty Lazy Girl. Click on the thumbnail to open it up. Scroll down until you see ratings and reviews. Click on the stars. Hopefully select five stars. Scroll down and select leave a review, type in your review, and hit OK. Now, if you're listening on YouTube or watching us in addition on YouTube, you can uh, like, comment, and subscribe to the Dirty Lazy Keto YouTube channel. And sometimes people even write me a lovely email, which I have one right here. I'd love to read if you, you got oh, a second. Yeah. I know Let's you have hear. to go. <laughs> um, this is from Amy, and she wrote, I love to watch your show on YouTube. It is easier to relate to someone by watching them than just listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you'll never miss a video, and we'll see you next week.